Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com and the new book, Killing Lincoln, which is in stores everywhere. Welcome to the program. How are you, sir? Okay, it's Killing England. Killing Lincoln was my first Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. It's killing somebody. <laughs> I know those little details. I know. It's, uh, I know. I know. Hey, Beck, you know the Grim Reaper, man, on Manson, huh? Yeah, pretty good, isn't it? You really, you know. Have you followed oh, Charlie? Have you followed the 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 story of the women that uh, adore him? Yeah, and I mean, it's course. crazy. It is crazy. You know, but that people don't understand the power of cults, and that has not been in the news lately. But it's still around. You know, like the Moonies and the Scientologists and, and the cult the following. The Democrats, the Republicans. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, they get these vulnerable human beings, mostly damaged, mostly with terrible childhoods and no emotional ties to anyone. And they love bomb them and they put them into circumstances where they do horrible things. Uh, or they're manipulated to go out and make money or whatever it may be. Um, but that's what Manson did. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people don't even know the man's name under 40 and how heinous he was and, and what a terrible time that was uh, in America, that crazy hippie anything goes era of three or four years where it was just totally out of control. You know, Bill, I did a monologue yesterday on TV uh, about, uh, you know, the last two mass shootings, the last two mass shootings, one in California, one here in Texas. Uh, both of the people had meant serious mental health problems. Um, right. Both of them uh, had outstanding uh, charges of uh, spousal abuse or uh, domestic abuse of some sort. Both weren't uh, qualified to have guns. And in both cases, the either the Air Force or the state of California didn't follow through and make sure that they didn't have guns. Um, if you look at the mass shootings in America, 57% of those guys uh, have uh, domestic abuse in their background. And nobody's talking about this. We, we well, have a serious... I am. I, I did. Uh, and I got hammered by the... the I don't, you know, I keep calling it the far left, but I think it's the fanatical left or the, you know, hateful left. That might be good. I said, Beck, just along the lines of what you're putting out, that this is the price of our freedom in the sense that in the Reagan years, the ACLU came in and made it almost impossible for authorities to isolate dangerous people. No matter how crazy you are, all you got to do is go to any big city and, and, and sit there and watch. Go to Penn Station in New York City and watch. Oh, yeah. Psychotic people walking around, talking to themselves, punching walls, menacing strangers, and the cops can't do a thing. Nothing. Because the ACLU came in in the 80s and said, these people have rights. You can't incarcerate them. You can't even bring them into Bellevue for observation unless they do something that is against the law. I mean, it always gets, so, it always gets down, though, to these things to where... You know, I I want to be able to put people who are seriously disturbed uh, and and make sure that they are getting medicine and treatment. However, you know, if you look at what we opened up and what, you know, the state of mental institutions were uh, in the 70s and beyond, they were frightening places. Yeah, just more in those places, that's for sure. But. It, you have to basically say, the American people have to say, and they're going to have to make a decision soon. All right? I mean, what we're doing now on BillOReilly.com, and you're doing something similar on The Blaze, is basically we're telling people, you have to take your country back. Yeah. You do. I can't be Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly. We, we can provide information and we can provide venues, but you have to do it. And, you know, people understand that other people can be dangerous. But if I call the police today and I say, my neighbor is screaming and yelling and, and maybe hitting his kid and, and acting in a way that's dangerous, in my opinion, police can't do anything. They can't do anything unless there's a complaint sworn out or they witness something. And so that when these people uh, go out and then they want to get a gun, it's easy for them to get a gun. And even if it were harder, they'd still get the gun if they wanted it. So 
people ought to know where we are and, and that these things are going to continue to occur, these mass shootings and violence, because we are a free society, and this is what we have decided, that we're not going to take action against any individual unless he or she commits a crime, period. Uh, Bill, isn't that, uh, I don't know, a, a needed condition uh, of to, to have authorities? I don't believe to... it is, Stu. So you're taking them into condition that, because you uh, think they might be uh, distasteful no, or erratic? No, <clears throat> that's, not, that's not what I'm saying. If there's evidence... All right, that a person is acting in a way that is dangerous to the public health. In the in the evidence. case, let me let me let me ask you. Let me clarify this. I'm specifically talking about in Texas and the shooter in California. Correct. The families were begging, 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 begging. And that's what I'm trying to tell Stu. So maybe you can tell Stu. <laughs> You'll be the interpreter to Stu. I'm trying to tell. Well, Stu. it's not exactly what it's not exactly what it's not exactly what you said. Yeah, I mean, what you said was you can't. You, oh, now you're sticking up for Stu. I play both sides, brother. I play all sides. Gee, I don't know. I'm a little worried about the government having power to decipher what yeah, they think is questionable behavior and bring me in for it. It's not the government. It's the local precincts. What, the, what are in they? In a local town like like the Texas town. Sutherland, okay, if you know that there's a guy who's menacing people and has guns, then the, the authorities should be go, able to go in and bring him in for psychiatric observation for a couple of days. I, is that fascism i don't think so it, it's a slippery slope i mean look it, oh, I, I, slippery slope. Yeah. what do you think here's, about that bill? I mean, it huh? is, slippery slope. so so here's the here's the problem we had a producer tiffany who just absolutely loved her family as a sweet girl and everything else nothing going on in her family uh her uh her son broke his collarbone or something something happened and there was a bone broken well my gosh she had the state in her house for months and, uh, you know, questioning and suspected, watching. Correct. They suspected that she was involved with that? They didn't yes. even suspect it, really. It they, was just like they just Got to check the box. Got to check the box. Got to check the box. That's ridiculous. Okay. All right. And, and if Tiffany had a good family lawyer, the family lawyer could have prevented that. Um, so and unfortunately, in our society, we all have to protect ourselves with family lawyers and everything else because it's Oof. a dangerous place. It's a dangerous society now. But the overarch is that right now, dangerous people, people who everybody in Sutherland knows are, are, are you know, not acting rationally, can get guns and then go out eventually and shoot people. We should point it's out, too, not a hard thing to do. In both of those cases, however, the person, both of the perpetrators were not supposed to have guns legally. Yeah, it had it already was, been yeah, decided. But that's the but government, that is, and that's the, full, that's yes, it the is. absurdity of the, of the left saying, yeah. oh, gun control can solve the problem. Gun control is never going to solve the problem. You, you've got 360 million people running around the United States at any given time. I mean, government's going to track every one of them down and make sure they don't have a gun. That's insane. It's not going to happen. It's just it, it drives me crazy. I don't even listen to the argument anymore. There's a point of being just being aware of your community. And I think, you know, because you're right. These people a lot of times stand out to the locals and you should be able to be able to check in on them. I just yeah, this, this is the first the this was the first have the power. To, to put people under observation um, in, in some kind of civil way. It's got to be a civil, not a criminal beef. Um, that, and that used to be in America. You, you know, used to be able to swear out, uh, if you were a family member, that, look, my son or daughter, my husband or wife, acting irrationally, um, we got to get somebody to look at them. That used to happen here. But, well, it, but it also you used to, gutted it in the eighty. I mean, but it also used to happen. I mean, I if this is the first time that uh, this has changed, where you usually you know somebody is in the news because they were you know eating the eyes out of every dog in the neighborhood, and people are always like, oh, you know, I knew him. I said, I I had no <laughs> idea. I couldn't be more surprised. This is the first time the shooting in Texas that everyone I heard was <laughs> like, oh yeah, he was ready to kill people. I mean, we all knew. Well, what him. about the what about the San Bernardino couple? I mean, uh, all of the oh my gosh, what a racist! In, what? in the Islamic world, <laughs> knew that these people were dangerous people, and then after the fact, they all oh yeah yeah we knew uh, yeah. You see, look, what we have now is a country that's frightened to do anything. 
You know, so if you observe something, you don't say anything because you don't want to get sued or you don't want to be in the middle of a controversy. That that's a sea change than the way it used to be in America in the 50s, 40s, 30s, whatever it may be, where neighborhoods actually banded together and protected each other. 70s and 90s. Have that now. That's gone. Well, let me give you a hypothetical example here. Would this be okay for authorities to step in and do something? Let's say that someone was uh, saying that their Corgi and Multipoo were premium members to their website. W- would that be Is, something that you think if someone was act, you know, get, somebody unstable. tweeting something like that to their huge yeah. audience that their two dogs are premium members to BillOReilly.com, would that be okay. something? All right. Now, now, Stu, this is what I mean about you. All right. <laughs> totally out of context. Totally out of no, context. No, no. Your right, dogs don't have wallets because your dogs <laughs> let, don't let have explain. pants. <laughs> We did a big town hall meeting on BillOReilly.com, which everybody can see over the weekend, and they uh-huh. should, yeah. because the theme is Take Your Country Back. And uh-huh. it's, an important, yeah. it's an important town hall. Yeah. What, the last question was, uh-huh. Bill, Bill, do you have any other pets beside Holly? Because Holly the Corgi has become a superstar, of as you course, know, of course. On, on Twitter or whatever. Everybody's talking about Holly. You, Holly is getting offers you wouldn't believe. I Home got series, it. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Sure. And Holly may, may listen. Holly may be substituting as a host on Meet the Press. Right. And you'd get a better. You'd get a well, better. Well, definitely view of the before world you if would. That be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I do so think it. Stu <laughs> is taking that out of context. Yeah. To mock uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not only BillOReilly.com, but Holly and Fiona mocking two defenseless dogs. I think Stu should be put under observation. <laughs> That's a fair point. Back with Bill O'Reilly in just a second. Glenn Beck. Back with Mr. Bill O'Reilly. Um, you know, I'm having dinner with uh, Chuck Norris tonight. Um, you are? You're having dinner with Norris? Yeah, I'm helping him out with his charity tonight, and uh, he's helping mm-hmm. out with my charity tomorrow. You know, you know, like, you like know friends... Ben, you got to be careful with that. What, what do you mean? Uh, not the charity stuff, and I... Yeah. Uh, applaud you and you, your yeah. audience should know that Beck is a very generous individual but anyway uh, Chuck Norris, my audience, you know, my audience big... would really like to know if you're a generous inter- in, in, uh, individual. you know I don't want to I think you know that we have done very <laughs> yeah. much to help well, children and, and vets I think you there's an that. opportunity right here uh, you know how, how? Our, are you hitting him up our, for money I'm for, not no I'm one? not no I'm not hitting him up for money that would be crass and rude uh, I'm what, just, do you want, what do you want, Beck? What do you want me to do? Uh, I don't know. What do, you, what do you have laying around? Yeah, I got a, you know, I got a couple of dollars. But you want me to? Yeah, you, I mean, yeah, money I mean, to stew, or what do you want me no, to do? I, you, uh, you you know, know, yes, I, that's exactly what he wants no, you to do. No, it's not exactly, that's exactly what directly. I don't want to do. But uh, right. yeah, it, we'll just we'll, we'll talk about it, Bill. We'll talk about it. All right, <laughs> all right, good. Okay, so I'm just going to warn you that yeah. no, you know, Norris Chuck Norris is not a big man. I mean, but he can kick you in the throat. <laughs> no, I uh, yeah, I'm very well aware of that. I'm very okay. well aware very of that. Uh, no, I yeah, I know. I'm actually working on something uh, that I I hope to unveil uh, on Facebook uh, later uh, this weekend. I'm I'm working on the ultimate uh, AR, and I I'm going to show it to to Chuck Norris and get his approval on it. And uh, what's an what's an AR? What's that? You know, an AR, an AR rifle. I've, I've listened to the guy from oh, Long Island. Oh, rifle. Yeah, an oh, AR. Yeah. You know, an AR. You know, like an AR-15. Got it. And we should got point it, out that uh, Chuck Norris is not needed to, to beat up uh, Glenn. I mean, really, Holly the Corgi would be the favorite in a Okay, battle. I don't think that's really even mm-hmm. <laughs> really even true. necessary. Okay, so um, uh, Bill, let, let's let's switch gears here and uh, and yes. and talk a little bit about. Uh, the Uranium One story. Um, the Uranium One story is being, uh, you know, dismissed by the left as, you know, uh, a hoax and it's just anti-Clinton. And the way it's being approached by some, it does seem to be just about Clinton. This is a huge story that really is not only about the Clintons, but about the FBI and what the FBI knew and why they are gagging um, really important uh, witnesses what what is your take on what happened with the with uh uranium one okay um you have to assume that nothing in the long run is going to come of this uranium one story i just want to tell your audience so people hoping 
that they're going to see an indictment of Hillary Clinton is just never going to happen. Much, much more likely is the Fusion GPS story. But let's stay on Uranium One and, and answer your question. There's something wrong in this investigation, which was headed by Mueller, who was the FBI chief at the time, um, because it was kept so secret and, and silent. Why? And Why? it was a, it was a, a seven year investigation with mountains of evidence. Uh, right. showing that was compiled by the FBI. Yeah. So why did they why did they deep six it when somebody actually went to prison for it? It wasn't like they didn't find anything. They did find some and right. somebody was sentenced to prison. Right. So why didn't the folks know about it? And why didn't Holder, the attorney general, hold a, hold a press conference, and explain what happened? OK, there's there's your those are simple questions, because, Beck, as you know, I'm a simple man. Yeah. Oh, that's very story. simple. Yeah, that's your story right there. Why did the Attorney General of the United States and the FBI chief, who's now the special counsel in the Russia Trump stuff, why did they not hold a press conference and tell the American people what the deuce happened? Right. And so <laughs> the, the, the deuce. The Stewie? Deuce. I don't want to swear from, on yeah. the Glenn Beck uh, all program. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm so, all about hope and love. Right. You know that. <laughs> oh, I know that. Okay, so yeah. then when we come back, I, I want to stay with Russia and go to Fusion GPS and and how the FBI was involved in that as well. There's answers that need to be had. Glenn Beck. This is the Glenn Beck program. With Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com and his new book, Killing England, uh, which is out now and great for the holidays. Um, Bill, let me let me switch gears to uh, um, to Russia and Fusion GPS. And my yeah. my concern on all of these stories, and I I feel like I'm pretty alone on this. Um, you know, you and I, I think, agree on it. Um, but I don't hear this from the media saying, let's let's stop making this about Clinton and Trump. And let's make this about Russia and the influence that they have over both parties. Uh, um, OK, but you're not going to get traction with the American people about if you take it that way. Here, here's my take on Fusion GPS. And this is why I think this story rises above all the other stories as far as things could happen. You have a organization that was hired by uh, Democrats and the Clinton campaign, paid six figures to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. Okay. Um, they may have been paid even more than a million dollars when it all comes in. Right now, the House Intelligence Committee is demanding Fusion GPS's bank records so we would know exactly how much they were paid and by whom. But the Clinton campaign's already admitted they kicked more than 100,000 to these people, and uh, other Democratic entities did as well. And one Republican entity, uh, the Washington Beacon, all right? But they got out early. So anyway, you've got a paper trail that can be subpoenaed. You've got hard evidence, not he said, she said, none of that. Hard evidence. Now, the, the co-founder of Fusion GPS uh, testified this week in front of the House Intel Committee, in a closed-door session, about 35 seconds after the session was over, one of the Republican members of the House Intel Committee called Fox News and spilled everything, which is what happens, okay? And apparently this guy uh, took the dirt that uh, some English guy uncovered, which has turned out to be, whoop, there, there we go. Is that Holly or is that uh, Fiona? There, you know, is that Fiona or Holly? That's uh, that's Holly. Okay. Fiona doesn't bark. Okay, good. Um, Glad for the you've time. silenced your dog's so anyway, voice. <laughs> you've said, "Why did anyway, they disagree? Did did Fiona disagree with you? Is that why you've silenced her?" Fiona's racked out. Fiona, <laughs> okay. she's out. She's right. taking her three uh, three hour nap. All right. uh, anyway, all right. So anyway, look, uh, the guy who's in charge of Fusion GPS takes the dirt that's given to him, doesn't check it out, tells the committee, "Oh, I didn't check out any of it. I just handed it to the media." Buzzfeed. Who puts it out there? All right. This is the worst. This is the lowest. This is garbage. This should be a crime. 
certainly defamation. All right. But if you're a public figure in this country, you can't sue for defamation. So anyway, this can actually be proven that this was an intrusion in our election. And therefore, people might be able to go to jail here. So that's why I'm saying this scandal. And then you go, you go to Hillary Clinton. Well, what would you know about this? Well, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, are you telling me that your, your reelection campaign kicked 100,000 over to this crew and you didn't know it? Come on. So that's why I'm saying this is the big story. So what is the difference between, and I say this as, a, as somebody who is targeting the media and also Hillary Clinton on this, but it can be played the other way as well. What is the difference between Hillary Clinton um, going out and, and accepting information that I believe they knew was coming from Russian sources? I mean, that, you know, uh, the Christopher Steele, who was the, you know, MI5 guy, uh, right. you know, said it was from Russia, his Russian sources. So they right. knew it was from Russia. Correct. So they knew they were purchasing it. What is the difference between that and Donald Trump Jr.? trying to get information oh, come on come no, on I, anybody, I don't see anybody is going to say oh i if it, look if you're running a political campaign and somebody says to you oh i got dirt on your uh your opponent meet me here you're going to send somebody to meet him there but that doesn't no, mean not you're going to pay and and you're going to and you're not going to check anything out like this fusion outfit got all this money and check anything out and they just put it out look beck any anybody any human being running for office now can be defamed by bogus made up crap I know that, that goes out to the internet I know that and I mean that that is a, a threat to our republic but I, but I think a, but threat. I think I, I agree with you but I, uh, the other threat is the Russians were playing both sides yeah you said and the both Russians, of them though we don't know exactly who who gave Fusion GPS the bogus dirt? So, and I don't think we'll ever know that because we don't have subpoena power in Russia. That made uh, that makes the case uh, against Trump stronger because we know exactly who that was, and and one of them used to be the right. the chief of the KGB disinformation uh, service for for disrupting political campaigns around the world. You're gonna have look. I'm not trying to defend. Anybody here, okay. if there's hard evidence that Donald Trump and his campaign chieftains all right, entered into some alliance with Russia to smear Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party, let's see it. Yeah, yeah. So well, may I suggest word of the day, chieftains? Chieftains. Love it. Thank you. That's an, Ir- that's an Irish kind of rock group, pop rock group, the chieftains. Very good. Anybody... Uh, they nope. roll through your town? No. Nope. <laughs> nope. No, not going? Nope. Nope. What ethnicity are you, Beck? Beck is kind of like a nothing thing. Are you? Where, Whoa. Where, where, where are you? Um, well, I'm just sorry yeah. to tell this Irishman I'm German. Ah! Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you're a German, Beck? It's like, uh, yeah. I should have known that. Beck's beer. Yeah, and all yeah. That. German. yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. German. And uh, and luckily, all my all my people were over here. Uh, every single you know, back, I, got, I think, left. <laughs> let, yeah. me, let me just say, in Killing England, and, and this is another, another brilliant segue for a plug, one of the heroes... It would be more brilliant if you didn't point it out. <laughs> I don't know if you know that, That's but... Point. Yeah. One of the heroes, the guy who turned the Continental Army around, was a German. Do you know who that was? Baron von Steuben. Mm, yes. Huge. And nobody, we have a Von Steuben Day parade in New York City. Yeah. It's like six people with pretzels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But this guy, he came over from Germany, Prussia, and, and he whipped the Continental Army into shape. Washington yeah. didn't like him. Yeah. And the guy was thrown out of Europe because he was gay. Von Steuben was thrown out of the Prussian Army. And he had nowhere to go, so he came over here and became a huge hero. So wait a minute. Did our founders, did they, did they know that, Bill? I mean, Yeah, they knew it, but they were desperate. Cow. 
Benjamin well, were Franklin was the guy <laughs> who got von Steuben on the boat to come over. Everybody knew von Steuben was yeah. thrown out of Europe because he was, uh, you know, it was okay. like, uh, what's going on now? And, yeah. and, uh, and, and everybody knew it, but the guy was a brilliant uh, commander, and Washington didn't want him at Valley Forge, but had to take him. And if you read Killing England, Beck, you would know all this. <laughs> wow. All right? Wow. And, and, but uh, getting back. And more, I'm Steuben, hoping. German. Yes. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation if not for him, I don't think. Yes, yes. Do you know that we were just a few votes away from having German as our official language? I did not know that. Yeah. Did you know, if you were to read one of my books, you, you would have known that. Um, no, but I read them all, but but I can't retain everything. Yeah, I know. So sure. much wisdom. That is the exactly Beck the books. way I feel about yours. So, uh, Bill, <laughs> you know, one of the things that actually, be, uh, last thing on the German thing, is I never understood why it's, you know, in Congress, you know, all of our yes. documents, the Fs yes. are actually German Ss. That's correct. Yes. Very so, good. Very good. And, um, and the yeah, word of the I'm, day I'm, again I'm, is chieftain. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, um, <laughs> getting back to uh, to all of this, you know, we spend a lot of time, we in the media, on uh, all of these so-called scandals, uh, Fast and Furious and the IRS, and, and, and American people get fed up because nothing ever happens, all right? It, they, they have hearings, they do this, they do that. I'm going to tell you this, this, G, this Fusion GPS, this is going to lead someplace, and people should pay attention to this. Because this was absolutely rotten, dirty garbage. And it could have swayed the entire election. It could have. And if Hillary Clinton and her campaign were deep in, and, and you know, Podesta, the Podesta brothers, John Podesta and the other guy, the other guy quit his own firm. Yeah, and they closed, spec, they've closed Tony it. Podesta. They're closing the Podesta group down and uh, yeah, restarting a new one. this. It, it it kind of this. yeah it it kind of says something bigger is on the horizon. Yeah. Why would you why would you just get rid of the Podesta group? Right, uh, Beck, you have it. I don't <laughs> I don't think Stu has it yet. Not yet. No, you yeah. have it. Does this Holly have big. it? Yeah. Does Holly this have is it? Big. Yeah. And yeah. to me, and of course, you're never going to see this in the New York Times. Never going to see it in the Dallas Morning News. Never going to see it because these people who love the Democratic Party and want this kind of progressive government to be imposed, all right? They know the danger. They know this all could fall apart. John Podesta was the guy who ran Hillary Clinton's campaign. His brother, Tony, had to quit his own firm where he was making millions of dollars. He had to walk away from it. You don't just do that, all right? So this is a big, big story coming down the train. But unless they listen to you and me on BillOReilly.com, thank you very much, they're not going to get the story. (laughs) You're not going to hear about it. (laughs) Bill, it's always a a pleasure to talk to you at... uh... Uh, on Fridays. You know, back next week we got Thanksgiving. You around next week? I am not around next week. I was no, wondering though. I, I was I I I'm, I'm I was thinking about going to a big family gathering, and a lot of people don't uh, necessarily, you know, enjoy my my brand of of, of politics. Oh, that's impossible. I know, and I was thinking <laughs> that can't be true. I was wondering if I could rent you out <laughs> uh, and yeah, just have you show you up. Where are we going? Yeah, just have, just have you show up at the dinner table. <laughs> I think take the heat off you, yeah. right? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> thanks a lot, Bill. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me in. Happy Thanksgiving.